It's 6 p.m. on Friday here in Korea. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Hwang Jihae. And these are the top stories we're following at this hour. The U.S. Federal Reserve keeps its key rate at near zero, easing uncertainties in the global stock markets, including Korea's. Japan's government looks to push through controversial security bills to expand its military role despite political and public protests. Korea's producer prices hit their lowest point in five years due to low global oil prices. We start with the highly anticipated economic news out of the U.S. The Federal Reserve had to, has decided to keep its benchmark interest rate unchanged at near zero, citing slow inflation growth. Our Kwon Soa starts us off. The speculation is over, for now at least. The U.S. Central Bank froze its key interest rate Thursday following a two-day policy meeting with only one out of ten committee members opposing the move. This despite the U.S. economy on a recovery track through robust spending and declining unemployment. Fed Chairwoman Janet Yellen said she expects the U.S. economy to continue to perform well, but that recent global market volatility and other factors are delaying what would be the first rate hike in a decade. Inflation, however, has continued to run below our longer-run objective, partly reflecting declines in energy and import prices. Yellen said a rate liftoff will come when there is more confidence of inflation rising to 2 percent, the previous target of the central bank. U.S. inflation currently stands at around 1.2 percent. Analysts say the U.S. also had to consider effects on developing countries as a hike would have crushed the purchasing power of developing nations. And if we have the emerging markets starting to struggle and we're not able to export goods and we're not able to create some sort of global inflation by a growing economy around it, that's going to be trouble for the U.S. economy as well. Korea, one of those emerging countries, had its concerns too, with foreign investors recently pulling out of Korean stocks. The delay could provide some relief for the market. If the interest rate increases, it will happen gradually. So I don't think Korea will be affected that much. Korea's vice finance minister said uncertainties will continue for the time being. And Korea's central bank chief said there could be a chance of a hike in October or December, which raises questions whether Korea will also raise its key interest rate this year. Kwon Soa, Arirang News. Korea's producer prices have dropped every month for over a year now. The latest data shows that prices slid by 4.4 percent on year in August, due largely to low global oil prices. Our Park Se-young has this story. Korea's producer prices have dropped to their lowest in five years, declining at the fastest rate since February of 1999. The Bank of Korea said Friday the producer price index came in at 100.88 last month. This is down 4.4 percent from the previous year, extending its downward streak for the 13th straight month. The central bank attributed the slide to falling global oil prices, which have plunged over 30 percent from a year earlier. In August, utilities, namely electricity, gas and tap water fees, dropped a combined 10.6 percent from the previous year. The price index covering manufactured goods was over 7 percent lower on year, while the index for agricultural products gained 4.4 percent. The producer price index is a barometer for future consumer inflation. The change in the index is commonly reflected in consumer prices a month or two later. Korea's consumer price growth remained weak, with inflation standing below 1 percent for the ninth consecutive month in August, also driven by low global oil prices and slack demand. Park Se-young, Arirang News. Japan's last 70 years of pacifism looks set to go up in smoke after a set of controversial security bills passed a key parliamentary committee on Thursday. Despite widespread protests outside parliament and scuffles inside, Japan's ruling coalition led by Prime Minister Shinzo Abe is pushing to have the upper house approve the bills later today. Our Lee Soon reports. Japan's upper house panel has approved controversial new legislation allowing the deployment of troops abroad for the first time since World War II. 
Opposition party members pushed and shoved to prevent the bill's advance onto the full session at the upper house, but to no avail. The ruling Liberal Democratic Party, led by Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, skipped the scheduled question session after finally forcing the bills through. We absolutely cannot accept this. It truly ignores the voice of the people. The committee's vote clears the way for the bill to go to the upper house of parliament for final approval. The opposition vowed to submit a vote of no confidence to delay the legislation until the diet disperses on September 27th. Abe's ruling coalition enjoys a two-thirds majority in the upper house, and it's expected that the legislation will be approved by parliament. Meanwhile, thousands of anti-military protesters gathered outside the parliament shouting scrap war legislation. All of a sudden, a parliament member got up and security legislation was passed. I felt a strong sense of anger and uncertainty. Despite opposition from many politicians and the population, Abe's government maintains that the revised legislation is vital for dealing with the modern challenges Japan is facing. If the upper house refuses to take up the bills, a second vote in the lower house can pass them into law with a two-thirds majority. Lee Soo-in, Arirang News. Talks between Korea and Japan on the long-standing issue of wartime sexual slavery ended without much progress on Friday. Korea's Foreign Ministry's Director General of the Northeast Asia Affairs Bureau, Lee sang dok said after the meeting, the two sides agreed to continue making efforts to resolve remaining issues. He also hinted that the foreign ministers of the two countries may hold talks when they meet at the UN General Assembly at the end of this month. Seoul and Tokyo have held nine rounds of talks since 2014, but are still at loggerheads over the sincerity of Japan's apology and compensation for the victims. President Park's approval rating has remained above the 50 percent mark for three weeks, the first time since before the Seoul Ho Ferry disaster in April last year. Gallup Korea showed her approval rating reaching 54 percent in the first week of September before dropping down to 50 percent the following two weeks. This comes after diffusing military tensions with North Korea and her trip to China to attend the World War II Victory Day parade. Pak struggled with low approval ratings for over a year, during which time she was criticized for a number of issues, including a tax scheme fiasco and mishandling of the MERS outbreak. With the reunions of war-separated families scheduled for the end of next month, Seoul's Unification Ministry says there are no major problems with the venue. This as a South Korean inspection team returned from a two-day checkup at the facility Thursday, the Mount Kumgang Resort. The ministry's spokesman said that there are some repairs to be done, adding that Seoul will consult with Pyongyang to send workers as soon as possible. Mount Kumgang has often been the location for reunions, but facilities there have been hardly been used since Seoul suspended tourism to the mountain after the deadly shooting of a South Korean tourist by a North Korean soldier. The U.S. remains resolute on the denuclearization of North Korea amid growing speculation of a possible provocation. But senior U.S. military officials are expressing concerns that the North's a traditional ally, China, may be losing its influence over the reclusive regime. Our Connie Kim reports. The United States says it'll take all necessary measures to denuclearize North Korea. This was a comment made by spokesperson for the U.S. State Department John Kirby on Thursday, as he elaborated on U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry's remarks the previous day. Kerry said it may take more than economic sanctions to end North Korea's nuclear threat, as Pyongyang is already economically isolated in the international society. Kirby warned North Korea of further isolation unless it gives up its nuclear missile programs and added that the ball is now in their court. Fresh tensions have arisen on the Korean Peninsula after North Korea earlier this week hinted at a possible launching of satellites and said it's ready to conduct a nuclear test in the near future. There has been speculation that Pyongyang could fire a long-range rocket next month to mark the 70th anniversary of the North's ruling Workers' Party. Washington, meanwhile, is concerned that China, North Korea's longtime ally, has less influence over the reclusive regime compared to the past.
U.S. Pacific Command Chief Admiral Harry Harris told the Senate hearing on Thursday that China's influence on North Korea is waning. Citing Chinese officials, U.S. Assistant Secretary of Defense David Scheer echoed the view, saying China's influence has been limited under the Kim Jong-un regime. In what could be an indication of weakening ties, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has not held a summit with Chinese President Xi Jinping since he took power in late 2011. Connie Kim, Arirang News. Korea's rival parties on Friday were unified in their denouncement of North Korea's threats to conduct a rocket launch and nuclear tests around October 10th, which marks the 70th anniversary of its ruling Workers' Party. Our Ji Myung-gil has more. The ruling Senori Party says North Korea's provocative acts will only increase the country's economic and political isolation and warned of stern punishment if threats are put into action. North Korea's threats will only cause further isolation from the international community. South Korea and the international community will firmly respond to any threats from the North. The North has claimed it has the right to conduct space research by launching satellites, but experts view this as a cover for intercontinental ballistic missile tests. The main opposition New Politics Alliance for Democracy also urged North Korea to refrain from irresponsible provocations, which could undermine fragile inter-Korean relations. North Korea should not dampen the current mood of inter-Korean relations. If it commences with a rocket launch and nuclear tests, it will be violating UN resolutions and will bring instability to the Korean Peninsula. We urge the North to exercise restraint. The opposition bloc urged the North to adhere to the September 19th joint statement from 2005, once hailed as a historic deal to end the North nuclear program made during the fourth round of six-party talks in Beijing. At last month's inter-Korean deal to defuse military tensions, Seoul agreed to suspend its loudspeaker propaganda broadcasts, criticizing North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, under the condition that no abnormal situations take place. The deal implied that the loudspeaker operations could resume in the event of military provocations from North Korea. Kim young gil Arirang News. Korea's main opposition, New Politics Alliance for Democracy, celebrated the 60th anniversary of the founding of its precursor, the Democratic Party, established in 1955. NPAD leaders and party members joined in the commemoration ceremony on Friday at the National Assembly. Since its foundation, it had been synonymous with the main opposition until the late 1990s under former President Kim Dae-jung, launching a 10-year rule inherited by former President Nomuyan until 2008. Chile has declared a state of emergency in the coastal town of Coquimbo a day after the nation was struck by an 8.3 magnitude earthquake. That's according to local media reports following a visit by President Michelle Bachelet on Thursday. The government says hundreds of homes were so damaged that residents were unable to return by late Thursday afternoon and nearly 90,000 homes remain without electricity. The quake, the strongest in the world this year, killed at least 11 people. The government has ordered evacuations of coastal areas, seeking to avoid a repeat of the 2010 quake when the authorities' lax response was partly blamed for the massive de death toll. Korea is fast becoming a mover and shaker in the lucrative trainer fighter jet market. The country has inked a multi-million dollar deal with Thailand and even has plans to sell to the world's biggest defense spender, the U.S. Our Kim Hyun-bin reports. Korea will sell four of its T-50 trainer jets to the Thai government in a deal worth some 110 million U.S. dollars. Korea Aerospace Industry says it will deliver the jets within 30 months of the contract, which was signed on Thursday. The jets will likely replace Thailand's aging fleet of L-39 jets that the Southeast Asian country has been using for the past three decades for mostly training purposes. With the deal, there's a high possibility Bangkok will purchase a further 20 T-50 jets in the future. Kai says the deal further boosts Korea's reputation as a top regional producer of high-level trainer jets. Thailand becomes the fourth country to take the T-50 after Indonesia, Iraq, and the Philippines. Kai and the U.S. defense firm Lockheed Martin finished development of the jets in 2005, 
pouring some $1.7 billion into the project. Experts also believe Korea could start to make inroads into the highly lucrative U.S. market, as Washington is planning to acquire 1,000 trainer jets worth more than $32 billion. The U.S. is expected to announce its selection in 2017. Korea Aerospace Industries, Lockheed Martin, Boeing, and Northrop Grumman are among the defense companies competing for the piece of the pie. Kim Hyun-bin, Arirang News. And that brings us to the end of our newscast. More updates coming up at 10 p.m. Korea time, so stay tuned and goodbye for now.